Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 2nd, and today we're going to take a look at this jet stream again, racing across the Pacific Ocean. We've been talking about this for a few days now, and it's getting closer. Uh, you can see the cold air spilling off of uh, the continent of Asia, Siberia here, and off the Bering Sea, and de helping develop the system here. So the subtropical air lies to the south of this. And just enjoying the general circulation of the planet here, you see the intertropical convergence zone. This is where the greatest heating of the planet occurs. And basically, the Earth is just a big heat transfer mechanism going on here, and it's spinning. So you get all these Rossby waves and this interesting movement of this cold air as it tries to go towards the equator and the equator equatorial air that tries to go towards the poles, tries to balance things out. And then you get features like our jet stream that's racing towards Pacific Northwest that kind of shows the boundary between those air masses. So checking out a little bit closer to home now here, you can see the big system developing over here, the Gulf of Alaska. That is not the storm that's going to bring us our huge winds and our big mountain snows across the region here. It's back up in here across south of the Aleutian Islands here. This is going to come race across. It's going to be filling as it moves into Vancouver Island, but it is going to still redevelop a powerful low on the lee side of the Rockies. And this gradient is really going to cast some powerful winds for the eastern portions of the state. Seattle looks like it could gust mid-40s as well. Portland around 40. But some other areas in western portions of Washington could get up towards 50 miles per hour as well. We'll take a look at that in some detail. But just like to point out that beautiful system is spinning up there. It looks like a cinnamon roll in the Gulf of Alaska there. So checking out the rest of the country right now, this visible satellite imagery, you can see these thunderstorms across the Gulf of Mexico moving towards Florida. There is a, a slight tornado threat down there today. You see much of the west is clear as some high clouds finally start to will approach today for the Pacific Northwest as we kind of get a little bit of a system in advance of that, but it is generally associated with the main trough coming in through Sunday. It's going to rain most of the day Sunday into Sunday night through Monday morning in the frontal passage with the potential for some thunderstorms behind that and, of course, the big winds that we'll look at in some detail here. So you can see here we've got the winter storm warnings and watches. I think it's actually just winter storm watch at this point for the Cascades, Oregon, Washington, Olympic Mountains. And they have the wind uh, warnings going up for eastern Washington here, too. We're going to dive into that a little bit more. You can see for southern Oregon, looking on the east side, some 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts, Silver Lake, Warner Mountain. And you can see the coastal coastal areas are going to get fairly gusty too, but nothing like they're not used to. Some beneficial rain will come down into Oregon. You know, a lot of Oregon is in drought conditions. There are even portions of the western uh, side of Oregon there is in drought conditions. And there is extreme drought on, for the eastern slopes, the Cascades in Oregon. Now looking towards Medford, Oregon, they talk about that west side rain, Cascade, big snows and the windy for the east side. And Seattle, talking about the active weather as well, the lowland rain and mountain snow coming through here, some gusty winds, chance of a thunderstorm they mentioned. We'll take a look at that in a little bit of detail as well. Here's for Spokane. This is where a lot of the high winds are going to be concentrated. Here you can see Spokane up to 60 miles per hour. That's starting to get in towards severe wind category there. Tree damage, power outages, strong crosswind. So heads up, this is for Monday. And talking about mountain snow impacts, of course, across I-90 Highway 2. So heads up for that. We'll go into that in a little more detail as we get closer to the event, probably tomorrow. And watch out. The, you know, eastern Washington, eastern Oregon are dry. So heads up if there's you're doing any burning or anything or any kind of forest fires out there could really get going pretty well with the strong gusty winds. And it is dry out there. So just a heads up for that. And this is a high wind watch through most of the lowlands of eastern Washington, including Ritzville, Spokane, Ellensburg, Yakima, and down in towards eastern Oregon as well. Now, this is, there's actually a thunderstorm threat for portions of northeast Washington, Idaho, Panhandle, and western Montana today. Probably just a passing thunderstorm or two through that area. Shouldn't be severe. But you can see that slight risk down there through Florida, too, as well as that tornado risk down there. So taking a look now, this is the NAM 3KM. You can see the showers generally waning. You see where the thunderstorm potential lies here for northeast Washington, Idaho, Panhandle, Western Montana, mainly there for a uh, potential for a passing thunderstorm today. 
And you'll see as the precip increases as we go on into Sunday morning, and then we really stay rainy most of the afternoon on Sunday and into Monday morning. Then comes the frontal passage here. And you notice these showers rolling through there. There's going to be some lightning potential with these showers as the snow continues to pile up for the Cascades here. And it looks like that might it's probably going to extend on into mainly areas Spokane East through the Idaho Panhandle in western Montana here. So you see these showers very numerous here going through Monday afternoon. And check this out. This is convective available potential energy. And watch this as we go on into the day Monday. So here we go, Monday morning. And rolling in through the day Monday, look at all this cape just kind of overspread the region. That very cold air aloft moves over, and it is going to give us a chance for a thunderstorm. Uh, mainly areas, uh, I would say, uh, Salem North probably, along the coastlines, eastern Washington, western Washington, that chance for a thunderstorm does exist on Monday. Here's the European model. Let's see what it shows for its lightning potential. You can see that today for that stray thunderstorm out here through northeast Washington, Idaho, western Montana. And then as we go on through the day Monday here, it will show some lightning potential for western Washington. Check that out. Um, looks like a convergent zone potentially developing here. And again, mainly areas Spokane east for a thunderstorm. And you can see that kind of goes on through the afternoon here through portions of western Washington. Even the coastline could get a lightning strike. Vancouver Island, southern BC, the mountains of inner, uh, the interior of British Columbia there too. And as we go through Tuesday, you'll notice there's still a little bit of a lightning threat. There's still going to be some cold air aloft around, but generally not as much as Monday. So checking out the European here is that jet stream rolling through here. This is last night's run here. You can see how that thing just maximizes itself just off our coastline here. And it even shows that cyclogenesis at 18,000 feet, just a very powerful low as it moves into the region here. And then it redevelops on the backside of the Rockies here. It's going to continue that gradient through eastern portions of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Just a, a wicked storm for this time of year. And I wanted to show you this. This is the the Canadian. I think this one shows it pretty well. Um, there's a lee low that forms with this event because the flow is strong enough over the Olympic Mountains there as the air sinks, it warms, and you get the rising there, and you kind of get a, a kind of a, a lee low pressure on the east side of the Olympic Mountains here. So if I move this into Monday morning here, you see this, notice this warmer portion of air here at 5,000 feet. That's kind of that lee low, and you'll see here how it doesn't cool down as much as the surrounding atmosphere does as we go through Monday afternoon. So that might enhance some winds just south of there, and it might keep the winds a little bit lighter up towards Everett versus the Seattle area and south, and especially over some of the Kitsap Peninsula. Some of the high-res models were showing gusts over 50 miles per hour on Monday afternoon. And you can see that Lilo just kind of hangs out there through Monday evening there, and then the winds kind of shift more northwesterly across the Olympic Mountains there. So that was kind of an interesting thing here. These lee lows do tend to occur when you get flow strong enough across the Olympic Mountains there. Now taking a look at the European model, this is the most recent. And you can see that's the one that looked like the cinnamon bun out there over the Gulf of Alaska now. Pretty deep low in its own right. And then we get our own storm just marching down towards the northern tip of Vancouver Island here. A 978 low just making landfall and some pretty good pressure gradients across as you can see, there's some, you know, Spokane to Yakima, there's almost an 8 millibar gradient coming across here. So there's really going to be some powerful winds rolling through eastern Washington. And Seattle's going to get its own good shot of wind. When you get up over 40 miles per hour, you do tend to get those nuisance power outages around the Puget Sound area and Willamette Valley. Willamette Valley should have lesser amounts for the most part. Strongest winds probably up towards Portland, maybe low 40s at best. <clears throat> Seattle... Some of the ensemble members are showing towards 50 miles per hour. We'll take a look at that. And really, Eastern Washington and Oregon are going to be the winners for the big wind on this and some of the terrain, especially east slopes of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, versus even the coastline. It should be up towards 50 miles per hour for the coast, but you get probably the winners are probably going to be Eastern Washington and Eastern Oregon with this powerful gradient setting up across the region. Now let's take a look here. This is the European. This just gives you the max wind gust as we roll through here. This is Monday morning. Shows a good punch of wind going through the Seattle area, 45 miles an hour. As it really hasn't picked up for eastern Washington and Oregon yet. You see the coastline, some areas up over 50. Vancouver Island getting uh, pretty blustery and gusty here too. Some areas getting over 50. And then as you go into late Monday morning, you see these winds just start to power down the wet, the east sides of the Cascades there in Washington, Oregon. And then look at this, all of eastern Washington and Oregon is under the gun here, as you saw with those high wind watches that are up, uh, gusts up towards 60 miles per hour and higher up towards 70 from some of the higher terrain. 
and you'll see that wind kind of punched through there on Monday afternoon for Seattle. Uh, some of the areas just west, up over 50 miles per hour. Seattle 47, so 47 miles per hour with new leaves on trees can cause some damage, and we could get some power outages associated with this kind of wind going through there. <clears throat> and you can see that uh, that lead low that forms there kind of keeps the wind speeds in check a little bit for that Everett area, and then on the north side of that even though there too. Looks like that's Monday afternoon as well as we go through the San Juans, that westerly surge down the strait towards Whid North Whidbey Island. You can get some gusts over 50 miles per hour there too. And this is also the European. Let's do the NAM 3KM here. This is the most recent run this morning's run as we scroll through here. Check out some of these wind speeds rolling through. As we go into Monday morning, check out the winds picking up through the Puget Sound area there. You notice how it has it a little bit more powerful here, just up towards Everett, where that little that's probably where that lee low is keeping the wind speeds down just a hair, but still 45 miles per hour can do some some damage to trees. And you'll see that 50s for Seattle area. I mean, the NAM is usually a little bit high as it's showing here, but it does show gusts up towards 50. And once in a while, it's correct. And then as we go on into Monday afternoon, we, we top out here on the NAM only runs out 60 hours Monday afternoon. But you can see those big winds are coming over here by this time. And look at Eastern Oregon. The NAM really has some pretty good winds there for especially northern portions. Actually, all of Eastern Oregon, I'm just going to go ahead and say there. And some of the higher terrain of Washington, look at that. Some hurricane force gusts over 70 miles per hour there. And the NAM has pretty gusty winds along the coastline too, up towards 60 miles per hour on the immediate coastline there, maybe out towards Astoria, peaking out pretty high too. <clears throat> Here's the Canadian. Check out the jet stream. We're looking a little bit closer now. You'll see that storm system that we saw on the infrared satellite. And then you notice our storm system is behind that. So there's that one. And as I pointed out, south of the Aleutians is where the next storm system is going to develop as it moves towards Vancouver Island here. And you can see the powerful jet, of course, just really a, a nice setup for a powerful windstorm for eastern portions of the state showing up here. And here's the Canadian model with that surface low out here over the Gulf of Alaska than the one developing this is the main storm here as it rolls across Gulf of Alaska and just south of the Queen Charlotte's North Vancouver Island. And just a wicked gradient going across. I mean, look at these. These are four millibars each. This is incredible gradient. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20 millibars from central BC towards portions of eastern Washington. Should be pretty intense over there. I might have to go chase that. Here's the GFS showing that surface low currently. And then it shows this kind of more towards it. Well, it's getting in more agreement now. It does bounce around a bit there, but it looks like North Vancouver Island as well with just a wicked gradient going through eastern Washington. I mean, look at that. You're talking about the Okanagan River Valley down towards Yakima, probably over eight millibars at that point with this really deep low forming on the west, uh, east side Sorry, of the, uh, the Rocky Mountains there. So it should be an interesting storm coming up here. We've got it all, mountain snow, potential for thunderstorms, high winds, rain, you name it, we got it. This is the system that moved through today it's moving through today and then this kind of a clipper here that's going to bring some rainfall and keep sunday mostly rainy especially afternoon into evening and then this power the powerful system really gets going on through monday so you can see, you know, see the timing of that there on monday now going on into the extended here for the european but after this system there's a chance for a couple nice days here it looks like wednesday thursday and then we might get a couple nice warm days before a big trough again arrives. The model's been pretty good agreement with this trough coming up in the extended. It is still in fantasy, but this has been pretty persistent in the models, and I tend to think it's probably correct. And then you can see the troughing continues to go as we get even a, a stronger ridge offshore that kind of deflecting us in a north flow, probably chilly and passing showers, but it might not be too overly cloudy. And plus there, there could be some nice days in a pattern like this mixed in with you know some periods of rainy, uh, periods of rain now here's seattle this is the most recent european run you can see upper 40s that ensemble members are showing you can see that first gut burst of wind that comes in monday morning then a little bit of a low late morning then it picks up again in the afternoon so it could be windy most of the day on monday and check this out some of these you know a lot of these ensembles have 49 plus coming through seattle which would be a damaging windstorm you start getting up around 50 and you're really causing some problems through the Seattle Metro as far as uh, wind damage and power outages. So we'll have to watch for that. But most of the ensembles are in the mid-40s. And our, that's really kind of our cutoff. When you start getting upper 40s, you start getting, you know, the power outages increase exponentially. Check out Spokane. Look at this ensemble mean towards 56 miles per hour. 
A lot of these ensembles are in the mid and upper 50s. It's like a powerful blow coming for Spokane. This starts later Monday morning, and it really peaks Monday afternoon and Monday evening for Spokane. This is Pendleton here, and you can see they're topping out about 50, 51. Plenty of these ensembles are above 50. And this could be even downplaying a little bit for that area over there. They could get guests up, you know, towards 55 plus even for some of these areas, especially around Pendleton and the higher terrain. You could easily be up around 60 miles per hour on the higher terrain. Uh, Burns looking further south. Look at this. You're in the mid 50s as well. Some of these ensemble runs are even over 60 miles per hour. And like I said before, the higher terrain is going to be even windier. So powerful storm moving through eastern, uh, eastern Oregon, eastern Washington. Now check this out. This is our system. You can see it remains really chilly and cool through Monday as we get this really powerful storm blasting through. Then you see in the wake, we might get some nice days. It even has two, three nice warm days before that troughing returns and really holds us down below normal. If you look onto the extended here, I mean, you're talking 50, mile, 50 degrees, sorry. Got wind on the brain here. If we go into mid-April, we're pretty well below average here. We start to average mid and upper 50s as we get in towards... Uh, mid-April. So that is a La Nina signature and that troughing looks like it might dig in and extend it there. And this goes for Spokane too. Look at that April 9th and on just chilly signal coming up in the extended. But look at these couple warm days here. Thursday and Friday might be nice and warm after the storm that rolls through here on Monday and Tuesday with the big winds and the mountain snowfall. And Brookings, Oregon, looks like a few nice days there too. And But the trough's going to get you guys too, probably here in the extended as well. So we'll keep our eye on that. We have a lot of time to look at that right now. We're still focused on the storm system rolling up through tomorrow night and through Monday night. And this is for April, I believe here. Yes. Um, yeah, just kind of showing how the rest of the country is supposed to be generally above normal in the Pacific Northwest, kind of remains below in portions of Alaska too. But yeah, so we've got the system going off in the Gulf of Alaska now. That's not the main one. Our main storm is developing now, just starting to take shape here off the southern Aleutian Islands here. So you can see the deep low here, and here's our next storm development back here. This is not our storm for Sunday and Monday. This is it back here, and this thing is going to spin up nicely. It's going to make a nice, beautiful representation on the satellite imagery as it moves into central British Columbia and casts that powerful gradient, mountain snows, and... I'll probably go out and chase this somewhere on Monday. I'll try to live stream it too. I haven't done a live stream in a while. I'll try to get to that. And if you guys want to do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. I, it looks like about two thirds of my viewers are not subscribers and we have a pretty good subscriber count already. We're over 6,300 subscribers. But if we can get those people that are watching and just not clicking the button, just click. It would greatly help the channel. Click like, subscribe. And we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll look at... You know, things are going to come a little bit more clear tomorrow. It'll be Sunday. We'll be right on the doorstep of the storm system. It'll probably be somewhere over the Gulf of Alaska really taking shape. And we'll really get some good satellite imagery as that really just starts to barrel towards the Queen Charlotte's and Vancouver Island. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow and we'll do this again with more detailed information. The high resolution models will be coming into um, range tomorrow morning as well. So we'll look at the HER, we'll look at the RAP, we'll look at the NAM 3 km and we'll just dive into what kind of wind speeds we can really expect out of the storm. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.